What's up guys, Tide Super Clean here. It's been a while since I made a video. Um, been kind of busy, but today we're gonna watch one of my favorite movies about the rave scene titled Groove. And basically, I'm gonna show a couple of scenes and I'm gonna kind of describe how that related to my experiences in the rave scene. So let's check it out. How are we looking outside? We got a shady hotel across the street and a little bar on the corner. Any apartments? None. Looks like we're a go. Load in tomorrow at sundown. It's 6.03 p.m. Then I'll see everyone at 6.04. Oh, wait a minute. I got one more thing. What's that? Police station's three blocks away. Remember, no obstacles. So basically what this scene is showing is how the promoters and the crew are trying to set up a renegade rave. And... This is a little over elaborate. It's not really like this in real life, <laughs> but it, it's pretty funny, even with the bad acting and all that. I just love how they make it seem like some kind of Mission Impossible type of scenario where they got the plans and they got where the cops are and when to actually go in and set up. Really cool scene. I just gotta say, um, leaving a vinyl records in the car like that, which comes up later in the movie as a small plot point, is very bad. You do not want to leave vinyl records in your car, because obviously they're gonna melt. And vinyl records aren't cheap at all. Take weed! So, <laughs> I'm personally guilty of finding beats in everyday items such as, you know, your uh, laundry machine, the dishwasher, traffic, people walking. <laughs> I love that scene. So I love this intro just because of the fact that it shows people from all walks of life getting ready for the rave. You got people checking their news groups and email groups. And just for a tad bit of information, back in the day in the 90s and such, we didn't have Facebook. We didn't have social media. So the way to find out information about parties and to send information to each other was either through email groups or news groups. Uh, forums were kind of around back then, but forums such as I Love Raving, Glowsticking.com didn't come around until a little bit later after this movie was made. But I just love how you have all the stereotypes. You have the newbie DJ getting ready, trying his pants on. You got the uh, hipster chick, you know, the candy kids getting ready. You have the guy that works at the DJ store. You got the TA at the university. Love how it just incorporates all different types of 
people and characters and personalities into the intro to kind of give you an idea of what to expect when all of them kind of get together for the rave. Infamous internet connection sound. People just trust some stranger to pick them up? Isn't that dangerous? So, which one? So, as I mentioned earlier, that's how people communicated was through news groups and email groups. And I don't know how it is now because I'm not really active on those type of groups. But back then, you could literally just, uh, you know, meet up with people through that, collaborate a ride, pick people up. It was a lot safer, it seems to me, back then than it is now. Um, but obviously, you know, you still had to be careful back then, you know. And uh, <laughs> this guy right here. Um, Hamish Linklater, I think his name is. He's in that uh, movie or TV show Legion. One of my favorite actors ever since I saw him in this movie. And obviously, he's the newbie, and the guy next to him is the brother taking him on his first rave. What's going on, Colin? You have to go tonight. It's a surprise for Harmony. What kind of surprise? A surprise, a big one. Look, I'm not asking you just as a roommate or as a friend, I'm asking you as a brother. Okay, where is it? It's in the city. Then I can leave if I don't <laughs> like it. I don't think that's going to be a problem. Oh, uh, it's so funny to me because I experienced the same thing um, trying to get my friends and such to go to their parties for their first time and seeing, you know, their reluctance. Heck, when I went to my first rave, I was just as reluctant as this guy. I was literally praying the night before hoping that the rave would get shut down so that I didn't have to go to the party. I was just so scared and it just cracks me up to this day to know that I had those feelings and to see it on this movie just uh I love it, love it, love it, love it. Hello. No you know what? I'm covered but thank you. Okay, cool. See how friendly everybody was calling to see if she needed a ride. Hello. No. You, know what, I'm you can tell she's the experienced raver. Okay. Gold dreads. I'll look for you. All right. Bye. Back then, no one really had cell phones as much as today. What is that? A swan. Oh, that's so sweet. What's it for? Well, 25th anniversary is silver, and 50th is gold. First, paper. I looked it up on the internet. Well, it looks like a pterodactyl. Do you know what three years is? Leather. A year? Okay, 11 months. I rounded up. But it was a year ago tonight we met. And you remember that? I remember because John Digweed was spinning. And guess what? He's spinning tonight. Mm. Well, I just hope they don't play me that happy house crap. <laughs> Not on my anniversary. I love how they included all types of people. They included, you know, the straight lace guy, the uh, experienced raver, experienced raver's girlfriend, the hipsters, the gay couple. It, it cracks me up because I've known so many types of people in real life that relate to these characters in this movie, and I could, I could just, you know see the relation and everything just it's really cool no busts and some fucking electricity Pretty dope. Let's do it. So basically what they're doing in this movie or in this scene specifically is a renegade rave. Basically very illegal. They don't have the proper permits, they don't have the permission of the venue owner to throw the party there. So basically they have uh, different employees for different aspects of throwing the party. So he's obviously the promoter. The guy um, working with the electricity is probably an electrical engineer who is trying to figure out how to splice electricity illegally to the venue. 
And we've done this before in the past at uh, other renegade parties here in Hawaii where we've taken electricity from outlets um, from other places and brought it over to the venue. And I, I, I just love how every little facet of throwing an illegal event is in this movie. What? Forget it. <laughs> I, I'm not parking here. Relax. What's the map point? Oh, the map point. Yeah, just hold tight for a sec. <laughs> so sketchy. <laughs> yeah. Oh, for real? Get the tickets, Dave. We're good. No shit. Damn. Oh, that's my bad, man. I'll take it for the team, man. Two bucks. <laughs> yeah, um, I'll see you there. No worries. Alright? Cool. Uh, I only have a 20. Give me a 3. Yeah, nice one, man. Nice one. I'll see you guys down there. Alright, brother. Alright, alright. Hey. Hey kids, uh, be sure to bust the left at the second stoplight, not a right. I fucked up the maps again. So a map point is basically where you find out information about where you're supposed to go to the map point either through a landline, like an answering machine, or someone's voice mailbox. And you would call the number, you would find out and get directions where to go for the map point. And the map point, you would pay money to get the ticket to go to the event, but with um, map points, the reason why they did that is so that in case, you know, narcs or a cop showed up to the map point, you know, they could either give them the wrong directions or kind of warn the promoters in advance. And it was basically a, a way to kind of, um, you know, fail safe the event in case the cops or such tried to get there. <laughs> This is a newbie DJ. So what happened there was that was basically called a train wreck where he had two songs beat matched and he was transitioning to the second song but the beats drifted and that's what was making that dick sound and everybody was digging the mix at first but then when they heard that everybody started booing and the girl that he was trying to impress <laughs> totally was just turned off by it. I've been there, I can relate to train wrecking and seeing people's reactions go negative done it plenty of times in my beginner days and I feel bad for him. <laughs> hey, I know you. Uh, I don't think so. Yeah, you're that TA in Chem 302. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not. <laughs> Love is the reason. Plur? Uh, plur. Peace, love, unity, respect. Bring on the love. Totally, totally on the spot with the candy kids passing out flyers and spreading love. <laughs> um, so plurs, peace, love, unity, respect. Um, they added the second R way later on, which stands for responsibility. And um, basically, it's the motto for the rave scene. I, I thought it was cute that they added that part in there. Uh, trying to figure out who to pay. It is. Poor guy. Hi, are you your Layla? I, I read your email. Oh, what's your name? David. 
Oh, uh, no, thank you. I'm fine. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Relax. It's just a party. It must be like such a new world for newbies to experience. And for me, my first rave was actually called uh, Rave Massive, which was a uh, Mega Buzz 1999 at the Oakland International Rave Center. And while this is like a small little underground rave, that one had like about 10,000 people. It was in a giant warehouse, tons of people. And it was my first party. So I was just tripping out when I got there. You know, I saw people dressed up in weird outfits and, you know, people just smiling, uh, shooting lights from their uh, little flashlights and all that. Um, gloving didn't really exist as it is now back then. So what they had was these little Ortofon lights that they would just uh, attach to their gloves or they would just use it around doing light shows. But I just remember seeing everybody dressed up weird and I was just thinking to myself, oh my God, these people are such freaks. Like, I just can't wait till this is over. I don't want to go through with this. I, I was so nervous and so scared. <laughs> feel for the DJ I really do to you know try your best at your set and then the next DJ comes on and just totally kills it <laughs> I feel you brother oh hey hi uh, have you seen my brother who uh Colin you uh, he says that he knows everybody <clears throat> sorry so um you're from New York just moved oh, for work my birthday I guess <laughs> happy birthday Jeez, Sony, just turn off the music? No. <laughs> uh, I'm from the back east, too. Oh, yeah? Where? East Lansing. <laughs> Michigan? I don't think that counts as back east. Oh, poor guy. You know, everyone here knows what's going to happen to you, so whatever you need to do, feel free. Really nice for a New Yorker. What's your name again? Layla. That's right. It's uh, like that uh, Kinks song. Jesus Christ. Is there a telephone here? I've I got a uh, no, Tuesday. Just take a deep breath and let it out slowly. Oh, poor guy. Drinking. Who just moved in? <laughs> mm, the company I work for. Yeah, what company? Software startup. You on the lease? No. <laughs> I'm gonna need to speak to somebody who is. So basically, the popo showed up and he's gonna inspect the venue and the building. And obviously, you know, cops are experienced, especially in San Francisco and, and in that Bay Area, um, are experienced with the rave scene and knowing what to look for. It's going to come up again in a few scenes. What they say about the three most important things in business. Location, location, location. <laughs> Ooh, uh, excuse me. Oh, I'm not sure. <laughs> this poor guy. <laughs> oh, dude, I'm sorry. Oh, go ahead. I'm finished. Well, you can't go in front of someone else. Uh, oh uh, no, there's a there's a guy. There's a uh, cop. <laughs> yeah, what's he doing? He's uh, walking around. He looked right at me. <laughs> uh, do I look high? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> what are you worried about? I'm doing something illegal. Okay, 
let's just stay here for a while and see what happens. Okay, but remember, I don't even know you. If <laughs> he finds anything, it's your responsibility. <laughs> what are you talking about? Well, you're carrying, right? Carrying. What, you mean drugs? <laughs> you caught me. I imagine this party is the last fun you'll be having for a while. Yeah, but it's an investment in something I love, though. Now well, you're a true entrepreneur. <laughs> I guess I am. Now, here's my final piece of advice for you. Yeah. What's that? Keep the music down and your ravers inside, or all the love in the world won't stop me from busting your ass. Yes, sir. It's nice of him, though, to let the party keep going. morning where'd you put the crate in the car like he told me where in the car in the front seat where in the front seat and do you remember what's wrong with the front seat no not really hey monty you're on in 15. the sun the fucking sun it's vinyl babe it melts well it's your own fault i mean who the fuck buys vinyl anymore anyway <laughs> Hey, Big Ernie, man, I'm out at 5,000. Uh, Actually, have have you seen Digweed? No. Why? We need to fill Monty's time slot. Uh, yeah, go ahead. Don't say it. Shit. Um, Polly walks in the chill room. Go find her. Quick. So sometimes this happens at parties where a DJ isn't able to play a set either because of music malfunctions such as vinyl melting or USB flash drive breaking or CDs not working. And so sometimes it's important to be able to find another DJ to be able to fill that time slot in. And thankfully the newbie DJ was still around when that happened. <laughs> so he's basically carrying his vinyl records in a milk crate. And for newbie DJs back then, you don't you didn't have your own record bag or you know record case. You got a milk crate to put your records in because you couldn't really afford to buy all that other stuff. <laughs> I, I love how they included that as well. Trump man, good luck.
<laughs> so that happens a lot for underground underground parties. Uh, the reason why this one was getting shut down was because uh, another party happening the same night got busted. So they sent everyone to this event, but that one had about five thousand people, way over capacity for this venue. So the cops showed up because all the ravers showed up. Why do you do this to yourself? Don't even get paid. Risk getting arrested for what? You don't know? No. The nod. The nod? Yeah. Happens to me at least once every party. Somebody comes up to me and says, uh, thank you for making this happen. I needed this. This really meant something to me. And they nod. And I nod back. <laughs> That's it. So basically what the nod is, it's just showing the party people showing appreciation for the event and it just makes it so worth it for the promoter to put their blood, sweat and tears into throwing the event. And it really is worth it, not just from a promoting aspect, but DJing, um, everything behind the scenes basically. It's worth it just to see people having fun. For that specific night because you know they're there just to relieve stress to just have fun you know escape from their everyday nuances and just to be there enjoy the music and dance the stress away hey guys so i'm late is this party still happening mm -hmm. or what voicemail digweed finally shows up change the message I think we just walked in with a fresh crate of vinyl. They'll be emailing about this one for years. I hate to interfere with your reality right now, but we were busted. You gonna let a little thing like that stop us? I wouldn't call getting the power locked out and getting our decks checked by the cops a little thing. I mean, everybody's gone. How about showing a little thing? How about right? opening your eyes? It's over. Guy, if there's one thing you learned tonight, I hope it's this. This shit ain't over till the last record spins. <laughs> So one of the main rules for throwing an illegal event, or any event in general, always have backup equipment, whether that's a generator, turntables, speakers, even such things as uh, cords and plugs. You gotta make sure that you have everything so that you can keep the music going till the last record spins. iconic uh, scenes of this movie.
love this song. watch that scene i'm just so breathless because you know that's the kind of feeling that you want to experience at a rave you know that just moment of pure bliss and just united with everybody dancing to the music i've been djing since uh 2001 and to see people just enjoy themselves like that is the biggest reward possible to get from djing other than that natural high and adrenaline rush you get um, DJing in front of thousands of people. It's a really great experience. Thanks. Thank you. So it's glad you enjoyed it. <laughs> so you can tell he's a big fanboy of John Digweed. Can I touch you? <laughs> what? I just want to say I touched the DJ. It changed my life. <laughs> I'm serious. I wouldn't be spinning this crazy shit if it wasn't for you. That's why I'm here. That last song you played was sick. Tore the roof off. I mean, you just can't find records like that in Fresno. I got a mix. What's I used this? to live in Fresno. It's the new Bedrock single. It's the last track I played tonight. Oh, shit. Yeah, I heard you played a rocking set tonight. Everyone said it was great. Keep up the good work. Hey. Right on. Thank you. Thanks. Nice meeting you. See ya. Hey, you know, if you're ever in Fresno, I do a weekly there. Friday night, it's, it's rocking. <laughs> Maybe I'll see you down there. Hey, Ernie. Yeah. Yeah? Uh, I'm glad I found you. I don't know, I just wanted to say, you know. Thanks. <laughs> That's the nod. Love this closing scene. So everybody's coming down and you can see the wide range of emotions everyone's going through. I feel so bad for her. So when they said they were going to the end up, uh, the end up is a very famous after hours club that Ravers used to all go to after partying in the Bay Area. <laughs> now he's starting to feel it. <laughs> 
So. So. I'd, uh, I'd like to call you, if that's okay. <laughs> Got a pen? <laughs> Such a cute scene. the globe. So he basically paid for everybody's toll. And I can totally relate, you know, where you just feel very giving and very, you know, happy. To really recommend watching this movie if you ever wanted to watch a movie about the rave scene specifically in the 90s san francisco bay area cali rave scene this movie encapsulates a lot a lot a lot of um how the rave scene was back then ranging from the candy kids the music um how they dressed you know just the lighting everything uh i always watch this movie at least once a year and it just always brings back such great memories um, and if I could experience it all over again, I totally would. The 90s rave scene was so awesome. And I know everybody says that about their respective era in the rave scene, but I really feel that the 90s rave scene and the music that came out of the 90s was just the best. All right, guys, thanks for watching. I'll try to upload another video in the future soon. In the meantime, go ahead and hit the subscribe button. Hit the bell so you get notifications when I upload a brand new video. Also leave a comment on your experiences regarding raves or the rave scene or music or anything in general. Uh, hopefully I can make another video about other movies about the rave scene such as uh, XOXO. Thanks for watching guys. Have a good one. Aloha.